Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video on my channel, Hair Literacy. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button so you guys are updated on hair loss and hair transplant topics. Visit my website at hairliteracy.com to purchase a micro needle device, which is scientifically proven to stimulate hair growth, my low level lace therapy cap, DH debunking shampoo and serum, hair growth vitamins, and a few other products for those who are suffering from hair loss. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you the experience of someone who has been on Dutasteride for well over 10 years. It's always difficult to come across actual people taking hair loss medication long term and them sharing their experience. So whenever I actually come across some of these posts, I think it's worth sharing with you guys to get a personal perspective of someone who was on hair loss medication long term. In some of my prior videos, I covered the topic of finasteride, um, users who've been taking finasteride for like well over 20 plus years. So I thought that this would also be relevant and also interesting to share with you the experience of somebody who has been taking dutasteride for well over 10 years. And as you guys may know, dutasteride is another 5 alpha reductase inhibitor that is much more potent than finasteride in inhibiting the conversion of testosterone into DHT. And for those who are, you know, sometimes not responding as well to finasteride, many people have actually started taking dutasteride and have seen better results. I actually came across this guy through a comment that was left from one of my subscribers in one of my prior two task rate videos. And apparently, Rick Rosner, who was once the world's second smartest man with an IQ of 192, uh, and he's actually still ranked as the third smartest man according to the World Genius Directory, has been taking Dutasteride for well over a decade. And to give you guys some context, the average person has an IQ of around like 90 to 110. And anyone who has an IQ of over 140 is considered to be a genius. So obviously this guy is way up there. Now, a few years back in one of Insider's articles, Rossner has claimed to be taking 50 pills a day. Omega-3 fish oils, baby aspirin, metformin, metoprolol, and just a bunch of other supplements and vitamins. But one that he's been taking that is well known to sufferers of androgenic alopecia is dutasteride. He claims that he's been taking Avidart daily as part of his regimen as it helps with prostate health, you know, helps with hair and also increases testosterone as he is a gym rat. The interesting thing is that he's also had 13 mini hair transplants totaling 1700 plugs. And I say plugs and not graft. A few decades ago before FUT and FUE were introduced. And I'm not sure if, if he's actually had any recent touch-ups to soften up his hairline. It doesn't really look like that's the case. But we can see that these were indeed plugs that were used from the, you know, the early implementation of hair transplantation where plugs were extracted and implanted. And oftentimes these plugs would contain as many as 20 hairs per plug and then implanted into balding areas. They did result in a very unnatural appearance, as you can see with Rick Rossner's case here, due to the relatively large size of the plugs and the gaps in between. Whereas current technology for hair transplants, specifically FUE, uh, they utilize single grafts, uh, single graft extractions, which are used to create natural looking results. A good comparison of Rick Rossner's current hair is the hair that we typically see on a Barbie doll, which has kind of like that distinct plug-like appearance. And I honestly think that a small FUE procedure would definitely improve not only its density, but also and him achieving a more natural looking hairline. He's definitely a good candidate given that he has a lot of good density and well established existing temporal points on both sides. So I think he would just really need a small touch up to the hairline with single grafts and some more density into the frontal and the mid portion of his hairline. And it would drastically improve the naturalness of his hair transplant. Back in 2014, Rossner tweeted that he was on Dutasteride for six years and a more recent tweet update in October 2020 stated that he was indeed still on Dutasteride, which would put him at well over 12 years on the medication. This is a few years more on Dutasteride compared to Ashton Kutcher, who claims to have been on Dutasteride for about 10 years with no noticeable side effects. And the good news in case for Rosner is that he also has indicated that he did not have any uh, side effects as well. So he's 60 years old. He did mention that Dutasteride is still working in preventing hair loss, although he did claim that his hairs have reduced in diameter. And he also stated that the last time his testosterone levels were checked, a few years back, they were hovering around 711, which is still within the normal range for his age. So a few things that I want to kind of mention. Um, Dutasteride is obviously a much more potent treatment for androgenic alopecia than finasteride. 
we already have you know multiple studies that show the efficacy of dutasteride as it inhibits over 90 percent of serum dh levels and nearly 80 percent of scalp dh levels for 2.5 milligram of dutasteride we also know that dutasteride is three times more potent than finasteride at inhibiting type 2 5 ar and about 100 times more potent at inhibiting type 1 5 ar enzyme studies also indicate higher scalp hair growth for dutasteride than finasteride so all in all dutasteride is obviously superior to finasteride in nearly all aspects for encouraging hair um, for hair growth and also slowing for the hair loss and since dutasteride is actually prescribed for the treatment of hair loss um, and alopecia in korea and japan there are a few studies on the efficacy and safety of dutasteride for treating androgen alopecia. And most people who are taking dutasteride are going to respond favorably to treatment with minimal side effects that are for the most part reversible upon cessation of the medication, just like finasteride. Most people can typically get by with one milligram of finasteride in slowing down for the hair loss and they won't have to resort to taking dutasteride. It's also going to be a little bit more difficult to procure dutasteride in the US since it's not FDA approved for the treatment of hair loss and a lot of doctors are hesitant to prescribe you know, dutasteride as off-label. And obviously it's gonna be more expensive than finasteride. Now, in the case for Rick Rossner taking dutasteride for the past 12 years and still maintaining his position as one of the top three smartest men in the world, a lot of people are going to uh, wonder when taking finasteride or dutasteride or any other 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, they're going to wonder about the influence on these drugs that have on neurosteroids. Now, studies do show that 5-AR inhibitors are also going to be neurosteroidal genesis inhibitors, which prevent the 5-AR mediated biosynthesis of various neurosteroids like allopregnanolone, dihydroxycorticosterone, which are going to be potent allosteric modulators of the GABA receptor. And they've also been found to possess antidepressant and prosexual effects in animal research. And for this very reason, Prevention of neurosteroid formation may be involved in the sexual dysfunction and depression that has been associated with 5-AR inhibitors like dutasteride and finasteride. So when you look at, you know, like the warning labels on finasteride or dutasteride, these pharma companies have to disclose potential side effects like impotence, decreased libido, sexual dysfunction, psychiatric disorders, etc. And I will say that these are very possible side effects that a small minority of people do experience, about 2-3%. to because ultimately, the physiological basis of mood disorders caused by 5-AR inhibitors are due to the dysregulation of neosteroids and androgen deficiency. And as a reason, um, I feel like more studies do need to be warranted in humans because studies were only shown on animal models. And as we know, not all animal studies are going to translate into humans. Uh, but given that the fact that there are people who still claim similar side effects and people that do experience you know, various sexual side effects. We have people on post finasteride syndrome. Um, as a result of this regulation of androgens involving DHT and also the upregulation of estrogen and testosterone levels, side effects are unfortunately a part of 5-AR inhibitors. And, you know, at this point, you really kind of need to assess if it's worth the risk for the sake of hair. Now, even though you are on something as potent as dutasteride, there is a chance that those who are still sensitive to androgens are still going to continue to miniaturize over time, as it was the case for Rick Rossner. Although his wasn't um, that severe and it was actually much at a slower pace, he hasn't really lost much ground, but he did state that his hair has gone thinner over time. And this can actually be attributed by the fact that although dutasteride inhibits a huge amount of DHT, which is the main culprit for you know, genetic hair loss, it is also going to increase testosterone levels, which is still androgenic in nature. So typically the trade-off of suppressing scalp DHT for a nearly 99% increase in scalp testosterone levels will oftentimes result in less hair loss for most people simply due to the high binding affinity and androgenicity of DHT relative to uh, testosterone. But people who actually have aggressive forms of hair loss can result in a greater acceleration of hair loss, especially if dutasteride is not paired up with something that can antagonize testosterone at the androgen receptor. The ideal treatment would be a topical form of dutasteride due to systemic and unsatisfactory side effects. But the size of dutasteride's molecules are going to make it difficult to deliver it as a topical agent, but that's not to say that you know large molecules may be advantageous since it makes it difficult to get past the subcutaneous layer of the skin which can prevent systemic absorption and given that dutasteride is also more lipophilic it could theoretically help remain on the skin longer but to date there unfortunately are no studies on the effectiveness of topical dutasteride and it still remains as an experimental topical for those who are able to get it 
um, you know, compounded through a pharmacy. So at the end of the day, I think that Rick Rossner and even Ashton Kutcher are great examples of individuals who were on Dutasterin long term without experiencing any various side effects. And they've actually been able to hold on to their hair. The truth is that most people who take, uh, you know, five ARs are going to respond favorably without any adverse side effects. And honestly, I think it was interesting to find out that Rick Rossner was, you know, on Dutasterin for a long time. And yet he was still able to maintain his position as one of the smartest men in the world. And from what I can tell, he really hasn't been impaired in any you know, cognitive function as a result of taking the task drive. This isn't to say that he hasn't had his share of weird tendencies because as high as his IQ supposedly is, it's funny that he actually took 10 years for him to finish high school. And to me, it, it kind of comes off as a hypochondriac person at times, especially taking 50 vitamins a day, well knowing that you know most are gonna be useless unless you are actually vitamin deficient. So you know maybe Dutasteroid was doing something to him cognitively. Uh, but that's all I have in today's video. If you guys have been taking Dutasteroid long-term, let me know how that's been working out for you. Thanks for watching guys, leave me some comments. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave me some in the comment section below. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care.